Oh my goodness. I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I spent money on that. In this video, I'm going to share seven money mistakes I wish I hadn't made in my 20s. And stick around to the end of this video for the best money decision I made in my 20s. I got my first full-time job when I was 19. And I found that when you start earning money, well, then you start finding reasons to spend money too. So the first trap that I fell into, and I am so embarrassed to admit this, <laughs> but it was a fitness hype. There was a lot of hype where I lived about attaching yourself to some wire that would literally electrocute the fat off of you. Like I mentioned, I'm super embarrassed about this. <laughs> One of the best movements I've seen in the world these days is the body confidence movement, and I love it. But that wasn't around 10 years ago. When I was 19 and in my early 20s, it was marketed that only one body type was really accepted. So whether I was watching TV or reading magazines, I was marketed a certain body type and this saw me spend an unnecessary amount trying to electrocute myself to lose weight. If you're wondering whether I lost any weight, well, <laughs> the irony is, sure, I was spending a lot of money on all of these fitness trends, but at the same time, I was also spending the same amount of money being marketed that I deserve two liter tubs of ice creams and chocolates for all of my hard work and all of my tough exercise. So I spent money buying all of the foods I didn't eat when I was a child, all of the cereals, all of the ice creams, I ate everything I could eat. And then I would also spend so much money trying to get skinny. So in my early 20s, I really needed to understand the power of marketing and I actually went on to study marketing. So educating myself on how people are trying to get into our brains to affect our purchasing behavior, this really gave me the education I needed to make smarter life decisions. The next mistake I made was not investing in a retirement annuity the minute I started earning an income. Compound interest works in your favor the longer you give your money time to grow. I really wish that I had started saving for a retirement annuity in my early 20s. Not only would I have legally paid less tax, but I would have set myself up with a greater advantage, which allows you to do things like take out more risk because you have planned for later in life. Now, my body, it doesn't really like gluten and lactose. I feel like the whole quality of food worldwide has dropped a little bit. And oh, I long for those days of farming and being on a farm and eating that fresh fruit and vegetables. If I felt like something sweet, I would pay a not so budget friendly amount for the purest form of the food. And when I started getting lost in health stores, I found myself buying vitamins, powders, tonics, pre-made smoothies and sugar-free chocolates I didn't even need but I would spend a lot of money paying for substitute foods. I don't have a problem with people doing that. In fact, I find the substitutes very, very tasty. But even looking at something like sugar, buying a substitute for sugar can be far more expensive than just buying that ordinary sugar <laughs> we already see on the shelf. I found myself asking, where's all my money going? And as much as I love the health drain, I realized that there was a little bit of a health hole draining my income. So I made the decision to quit buying the expensive good stuff and rather just opt for simpler whole foods. And don't get me wrong, simple doesn't mean unhealthy. It's just affordable and not super fancy. I made a bit of a life change and opted for more of a slower lifestyle. And with gaining control of my time, I've been able to really invest time into preparing meals and cooking food that really makes me happy. It's tasty, it's simple and it fills the hole in the tummy. <laughs> Instead of buying pre-made meals, I've learned how to make my favorite meals from scratch. Food that used to make me feel bloated when made from scratch really have somewhat of a nourishing effect on me and actually leave me feeling pretty awesome. Also, Italian pizza is great for date night. In essence, I save a lot by not being a regular at the pre-made health hotspots. I still love them though. <laughs> So as much as I love a good acai bowl, I now leave it for a special treat rather than having it every single day. Still love it, but it's expensive. And another thing, I also don't use Uber Eats or any platform to deliver me food. And that also saves me quite a bit of money. So this was probably my biggest financial drain. And that is being desperate and not patient when it comes to starting businesses. I was always good at saving money in my 20s. But what I would do is I would save up quite a bit of money and then start a business desperate for it to work. 
because for some reason I had this idea that I needed to build something to be someone. I lost a lot of money paying for someone to build my website, where I have now learned how to build my own website. I also spent a lot of money on Facebook ads, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. I kind of gambled a bit when it came to Facebook marketing back in the day. <laughs> it's not a good idea to start a new job, launch your own business and study towards a degree in every single free moment you have. I would recommend that you choose two of the three and avoid burnout. You may argue, sure Margs, but you failed fast. You learned so many lessons that you'll never repeat again. But the thing is, if I had been patient, I wouldn't have had to learn those lessons the hard way. I've since become a lot more comfortable in my own skin and I don't feel like I have to prove anything to anyone anymore. I focus more on who I am rather than thinking about how much money I could make or what other people might be thinking of me. Learning to be kind to yourself is a lot cheaper than spending a fortune to build something for the acceptance or to impress people you don't even know or you don't even like. So in my 20s, I was also a bit of a victim of fast fashion. Now, it seemed affordable until I considered the quantity of clothes coming in and clothes going out. I've since become a lot more minimalist. After living out of a suitcase for a year, I've really grown to know that buying quality clothes that last over long periods of time and also clothes that are really reliable, even though they might be a little bit more expensive straight off the bat, they last longer and you don't end up in this vicious cycle of buying new clothes and getting rid of clothes. Sure, my fashion sense these days might be a little bit boring, but as I journey from my 20s to my 30s, I kind of feel like I like boring. At least in this season, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I also made a few expensive mistakes when it came to travel. Joining group travel experiences like Kontiki's ended up costing me a lot more than when I went overseas and did summer camps or cultural exchanges. When I did those paid group travel experiences, I didn't think so much about what I was spending my money on because I became victim to groupthink. I did what everybody else was doing. I spent money on what everybody else was spending money on. When I traveled alone, I was a lot more mindful of what I was spending money on and my money really seemed to stretch. You can also argue, Sure, you could have saved all that money if you didn't go traveling, but I'm not an advocate for that. Traveling in my 20s was one of the best decisions I made. It really challenged me, it stretched me, it made me realize how small I am and how every single country has problems. It made me grateful for what I have and I don't really think of the grass is greener on any other side. And I guess I ended up learning methods of travel that ended up saving me money as opposed to doing those luxurious group travel experiences. No problem if you wanna do those, but for me, they just ended up costing me a lot more than traveling individually or with my husband. So if I actually have to reflect on what I spent my money on in my 20s, it really seems to be rooted in a whole bunch of vanity expenses. And guess what? This last tip is no different. I used to get my hair done by the hair professionals. And I don't judge you if you like getting your hair done by professionals. I just found personally that by maintaining the gold or the blonde in my hair, it cost me a lot more than it needed to. And I always found myself falling for that trap of when they were giving me that hair massage and the hair professional whispers, can I give you a hair treatment? And in that moment, I felt thinking like a human. I'm going to say yes to anything and everything. <laughs> cost me a lot of money. <laughs> Much like learning to create my own website, I learned to do my own hair with the help of my incredible husband. Sure, maybe I shouldn't even dye my hair. Maybe I should just be my natural color, which is, I actually don't know. <laughs> I think it's dark. <laughs> but I just feel like my blonde hair suits my personality, at least at this stage of my life. But I am an advocate for change. So if I change my mind one day and you see me with red hair or my natural hair color, then I'm choosing to celebrate that day in advance but up until that time I'm just going to make the more affordable decision if I want to have a hair expense I'm going to make it as affordable as possible and it's also a lot of fun just hanging with my husband and having him do my hair <laughs> hashtag husband goals so it's clear that I made some really foolish financial decisions in my 20s but I promised if you stick around till the end I'm going to tell you the best decision I made when it came to managing my money and that is that I never got a credit card
And I know this is controversial. Credit cards afford people the opportunity to fly first class. Credit cards give you points. Credit cards gives you a whole bunch of benefits. But the thing is you gotta spend money to get those points and to get those benefits. And for me, that's just a temptation I don't even wanna dip my toe into. I love the fact that I'm turning 30 next year and I've never owed a bank money due to a credit card. When I bought my car, I did opt in for a payment plan. So not getting a credit card, for me, my own experience here. <laughs> I'm not telling you what to do with your money. But for me, I just love the free them that I was always conscious about needing to save money if I wanted to spend money and something I'm proud of as I reflect back on my 20s. So thank you for spending your time with me and if you enjoyed this content there's no better way of showing me than giving me a big thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see future videos from me.